But today we're talking about filing late consequences for 1065 and the 1120 S. So of course, you know what I'm talking about, right? And I noticed that my slide today didn't have the disclaimer, like, you know, how we don't take responsibility and stuff. Since I don't have that slide, I'm just gonna say it, make sure you are, you are taking charge of your own tax return, okay? Even if you filed with community CPA, the tax return itself, the content is still your property. So make sure that you know what you're giving to your tax preparer. And of course, making sure you talk to the tax preparer so the tax return is, filing, is filed accurately. So S Corp and a partnership late filing. S Corp, S Corporation and partnership returns are passed through returns. The, you know, the word of pass through, um, you know, simply means that there is no taxes assessed on the return itself. So when you file return tomorrow for 1065, 1120S, your tax preparer probably tell you, ah, oh, don't worry, you don't need to pay taxes. Yeah, it is a pass through entity. So of course you don't pay taxes because it is passed through. So there is a late filing penalty because IRS do not want you to not report that because your 1040 will be wrong, right? So the pass-through is taking, how did they pass through? They, they, they show up in the K-1 form. It is a form. It is eight by 11 regular printout, right? And on there though, on the left-hand side, top corner, it tells you it's K-1 1065, or K1 1120S. So these are two different K1 schedules, but your income or your losses are sitting on that piece of paper and it goes into your 1040. And the IRS matches the K1 with your 1040. So that is why you cannot file late because how are you going to file your 1040 accurately? So to, you know, to make sure um, you are in compliance with this. So the IRS invented failure to file penalty. Okay, so now let's look at what is the, uh, the due date because obviously when you pass the due date, you're failure to file. And, um, but when you have your original due date here, um, March 15, for 1065, 1120 S, the, the original due date is March 15. When March 15 is here, you don't file, no big deal, you file extension. That will extend you automatically to September 15. You don't need excuses. You don't need to say, oh, I'm just, I'm sick, so I didn't file. I It's automatic. So you just fill up the form and then you can go to extend your 1065, 1120S to September 15. And once you do that, and once you do that, and what IRS also recommend is that they know you are passing through your income from 1065, 1120 S to your 1040. So they want you to estimate whether, are you sure you didn't owe any taxes? Maybe you're gonna pass a million dollar income and then your 1040 will be blowed up with taxes, right? So the IRS want you to pay taxes ahead of time at the time you file extension and if you owe more than $1,000 taxes. All right. So how do you know, um, like you, how do you know that you will be charged with penalty? And if you don't listen to this webinar, you won't know. And, or maybe you always have been late. So you got so many notices already and you, are, you, you know it by experience. But one thing I want you to understand is I just will never call you say, hey, you are late. How come you didn't file? You know, they don't even know who you are. They just, they, they're gonna send you a letter when they receive your late filing. They send you a letter, tell you why they're charging you. So there's these type of penalties are very common. And the failure to pay, you have, you owe, you didn't pay, failure to pay. Failure to file, and you didn't file extension, so after March 15, you failure to file. You filed extension after September 15, you failure to file, right? So failure to file. Accuracy related penalty. And this is largely 
related to audit or related to the IRS notice. So they believe that you, you are not accurate with your, with your income, with your expense, they, they charge you for accuracy related penalty. And the failure to deposit dishonest checks, of course, you know, if you pay taxes to IRS and write a check that dishonored and that IRS is gonna charge you for failure to deposit. Okay, so those are the penalties that comes in. And then here, late filing consequences. And you say, oh, well, you know, I pay money if I'm late, I pay penalty. Anything money can resolve is not a problem. Have you heard of that before? I heard that a lot. Anything that money can resolve is not an issue. Mm. That is true for people who are not having to struggle with cash flow. But for people who are struggling with cash flow day in, day out, that hurts. That's like, what are you talking about? So everybody is different, okay? So late filing consequences, number one, it is illegal. When we use the word of illegal, that means you can be charged totally different, no longer penalties, no longer interest, but it is what they called civil or even criminal penalties, okay? So that would be a, on, on the civil penalty is totally different than your late filing penalty and your, your not to pay penalty. And one, you know, as a, a POA, power of attorney, while we represent client, and if you got civil penalty, we actually have to do our paper differently with IRS listing civil penalty there in order us to represent you. So it is really, uh, it is a totally different animal and you certainly don't want to be classified as conducting illegal activities, right? And you, if you are late filing, of course you prepare to pay penalty. For a return, where is no taxes due, the failure to file penalty is assessed on monthly basis. And is monthly times number of the people in the entity. For example, if it is partnership with two partner times two, three times three, shareholder, two times two, three times three. So it is by the, the ownership unit or shareholder numbers, okay? So each month times how many people? And the, and the, the, the most important things I want to make it really clear, late filing penalties, and it is like you are personally liable when you are filing partnership return. But when you are filing S corporation, you are not directly liable for the penalty. So you, you are held personally liable if you are a partner. The penalty is assessed against the partnership. The, the partners, investors are held personally liable for the penalty, listen to this, for the penalty. To the extent that the partners or investors are liable for any partnership debt. So that is part of your partnership operation agreement. And sometimes, very often you see the two partners. One is the one running the operation and responsible for all things. The other one is passive partner. It's just a investor and not responsible for anything, not responsible for debt. In that case, that late filing penalty doesn't go to that investor. It actually stays with the partner. So that's why it is how personally to the extent the partner and the investor are liable for any partnership debt. Basically, the penalty is on partnership, right? It is all on the entity, same as S corporation, is on the entity. But in S corporation, it's different from partnership. It is not directly liable for penalty. Shareholder is not directly liable, but that charges is on the, on the entity. All right. Now, if if um, you know, I don't have a lot of slides because we only have thirty minutes. But this is the most important one, so I just want you to know. And late filing, let's calculating. Okay, for this is the number for twenty twenty. You know how uh, every year IRS will give you the penalty per month, dollar amount uh, per month. They are not the same. Um, you know, I don't quiz me, but. I don't remember, but I think 
for 1065 was less was 205 maybe or 207 for uh, two, back in 2017. So they changed those numbers. But in 2020, the 2020 tax return that is due tomorrow, hey, tomorrow. And that one is 210 for each month or part of a month, okay? For maximum 12 months, the failure continues. If you have your failure to late pay, you don't pay, you don't pay. October 15 come, you didn't pay. November 15 come, you didn't pay. So if you continue for 12 months or 13, 14 months, the maximum is 12 months. So it's 210 times 12 months. That's maximum for one partner. But of course, in 1065, you won't have one partner. If it is one, you would have filed sole proprietorship, right? So you would be like disregarded entity and you file Schedule C on your 1040. So 1065, obviously you have two, at least two. So let's use an example. 10 members of partnership, 10, 10 partners. And the 1065, 2020, and it, you know, due tomorrow, but you didn't. You filed it in October 15. You forgot the due date. You filed October 15, one month overdue. So the penalty would be 10 times 210. So your penalty is 2,100. Hurt, hurt, right? It's a lot of penalty. Sometimes in my early days, in my early days, when I was much younger working on taxes, when I received those notice, I cringe. I'm just like, I can't believe it. We got a penalty. Then we have to hurry up and got your client goes, why, what happened? And uh, you know, did you, have you ever been late before? If not, we can do something and stuff like that, okay? And 11, 20, yes. That's 205 for each month, a part of the month, and the, for the return is late, multiplied by the number of shareholders. So if we have 10 shareholders, file 11, 20, yes, 2020, uh, October 15, one month late, the penalty for late filing would be, 10 times 205. So we're just talking about late filing. We haven't even go to 1040 to talk about your late payment. And th that would be a 5% right there, right? So this is just the late filing for 1065, 1120. This is what we want to focus on today. All right. Now, having said that, and uh, so you are like late and late anyway, so I can't get it done tomorrow, Ying. And, you know, I'm just going to be late. And do I have any way out to not pay? Maybe, maybe. So look at this. If you filed as corporation or partnership return late in the past few years, you have likely seen penalty notice already, right? So find help with S Corp partnership late filing penalty by requesting, by requesting, and you don't have to request that through other professionals. You don't have to come to community CPA to request that, but we certainly can do that for you. But you can request that yourself too. You can request for penalty abatement. Penalty abatement due to reasonable cost. Maybe you're, you know, during pandemic 2020, God knows, maybe you got COVID three times, you know? And you're the only person that doesn't get doesn't get vaccinated through uh, actual costs, <laughs> so you get three times. Oh, I know people who got two times. Okay, <laughs> and um, you know, I just like okay, great. Why do you get two times? So uh, reasonable costs that could help you, but you better prove that the the COVID you caught is all around the due date. So if your COVID is kind of off the due date, mm, I'm not sure that's a good reasonable cost. And the penalty abatement due to first time penalty abatement or a clean compliance history. So maybe you don't have a headache, maybe you are not sick, and you're just, you know, you're just really, really good. Everything is on time, but you remember that was October 15. You never knew it was September 15. And you didn't even know you're supposed to file a partnership return. And that because you always filed as a Schedule C, but this year, suddenly someone joined venture with you, you just didn't even realize that is a 1065 return. Then you were just late, awfully late. You didn't even file extension. In that case, you can request for first time penalty abatement or clean compliance history. Of course your history is clean because your partnership didn't even 
haven't even born yet. You haven't even really submitted your partnership yet. Of course, your compliance history is good. So with that, to get updated. So I asked, we'll send you a letter say, we're pleased to let you know. And we waived, we waived, updated your penalty. Yeah, we, we, we see those letters from time to time. They do, they do give you a chance to not pay that penalty. And the safe harbor penalty relief is for small partnership with 10 or fewer partners. So, you know, with, with partners, that's really difficult, right? Some partners just, you know, you can't get a hold of them anymore. And you couldn't really file your partnership return because you forgot that partners, you don't have that partner's social security number, okay? And things could happen. So you can actually apply for the penalty relief based on safe harbor rule. So those are the things when you write that letter, when you make that call, and you need to utter these words. So in order the people on the other side at IRS to look up their book and see exactly what they can do for you, whether they can abate. And my, I would say that every time I get on the phone talking about those abatements, I really feel that on the other end, uh, the IS folks are really eager. They are willing, they want to give you the abatement. But of course not if you, this is your third time First time ask for abatement with no reasonable cause, of course, that would be difficult, right? All right, so tips. So tips, filing tax return on time each year, even if you're not able to pay. So don't hang up on the payment side. So do tax return and do not hang up on the payment side. A lot of people don't do tax return because they're imagining themselves owing a lot of money. I literally have not even once, not twice, many times, clients were so stressed out coming to us and many years tax return piled up. I didn't file because I know I'm going to pay so much. I don't have money, so I didn't do. And we look at the tax return, finish the work. Not only they don't pay, they supposed to get money back, but three years statutory limitation. You know, you give me 10 years tax return, the first seven years of refund lost. You don't get it. You don't get it. It's not like IRS is your bank. You just save your refund there. They're not. So after, if it is three years older, even if you have a refund, you don't get that check anymore. So really, folks, don't go for your gut feelings because our gut can be so wrong sometimes. And our gut is always wrong with IRS. Don't you think that's true? Because they're so far away and it's just like, you don't get that vibes. It's not like you're working with me I'm, I'm on webinars and you see me in person. So you, got, you get that, but yeah, don't go, don't go by your gut and then let professional calculate for you. Okay, and then you can reduce, you can reduce your penalty or getting the way based on what we talked about at the previous slides, right? You can do reasonable cause, you can do first time and a good compliance history, and you can also use safe harbor rule for partnership. Okay, now, and if you really truly stuck on that thought about I owe too much money, knowing that I always tell people this, if you have to borrow money to live, the best debtor, the best person, the best company you can borrow money from, you know who that is? RIS. See, I didn't say state because the state can collect on you very aggressively. Your driver license is gone, your property tag, your property is gone, stuff like that. Their collection effort can be really close to home. Federal, IRS collection is a most civilized collection. And if you really do have to owe money, you owe IRS money, you work out a plan, they don't bother you. And if you're really in dire needs and you don't have money, IRS even tell you, hey, don't pay because we're okay, we survive. And you stop paying for a year. Then after what, after 10 years, statutory limitation goes off and your income tax just get wiped out if that is the case. If you owe debt to IRS on income tax, see, I said income tax, I didn't say payroll tax, okay? If it is income tax, 10 years, IRS will forgive you 
will forgive you. And of course, if you file personal bankruptcy, as long as it's older than three years, so when you file bankruptcy, those uh, IRS debt, the state taxes debt, those income taxes from your business, they can be written off. So, you know, those are the things for you to, I'm saying this not because I'm planning you to do that. And I don't want anyone in my webinar would have to go through those kind of a hardship in life. And we want a good life, right? So we don't want to end up there. But I don't want you to have the fear working with IRS because they are reasonable. There's tools, there's helps, and there's people who knows IRS so well can get can direct you to the right place to get that situated. Okay. So tips and tips from us every day, and we have a lot of them. And of course, uh, you have this installment you can make with IRS. And they do charge you a small fee, uh, but it is available to you. Installment is, you know, you pay a lot of things on installment. You pay your credit, you, you pay your mortgage on installment. You don't pay your house off in one day. You pay them slow. So if you really end up owing IRS for a million dollars, then you just pay installment uh, if you don't have the cash. But I always say that our tax system is so fair. It's really fair. If you ever ended up in a situation where you absolutely have no money, but you absolutely owe so much taxes, I would advise you, and for whatever tools you have there, and you look at your taxes, because our tax system isn't really meant for someone to borrow money to pay taxes. Our tax system is really should be fairly straightforward and simple, and you really should not end up in that situation. All right, so this is our contact information. And today's webinar was bought by our client who wants to know what happened if they cannot file 1065, 1120S tomorrow, and what kind of damages they're gonna have. So this webinar covered how to calculate that. And you remember those numbers? $210 per month per partner for 1065. And then it's 205 per shareholder per month for S Corporation. So I hope you enjoyed our webinar and we will see you again on Saturday. Um, all right, I will talk to you all again. So good to see you. Bye-bye.